So in this segment, let's talk about photoelectric emission. So um, let me just explain photoelectric emission here in a nutshell. Let's say we have a metal surface right here. Uh, it's quite a metal, a metal surface. And definitely we have in this surface that is made up of, you know, particles that are, you know, at the surface here, they are attracted to each other in a certain bond or whatever. So now when we are having, um, we can have radiations come and these radiations are incident onto this surface like that. Okay. Radiations can come and they're incident onto this surface. These radiations, when they are incident onto that surface, they carry energy. Now they can come and some of this energy can be absorbed by that metal surface or some of that energy can actually go. Now remember that on the surface here, we are having, you know, particles. Now those particles, you know, they have, you know, electrons that are fast moving. And these electrons, they are, remember, electrons are attracted towards the nucleus by a certain force. There is a force of attraction that is causing these electrons to be, uh, you know, attracted towards their nucleus, wherever they are rotating from. So there is that energy there. However, when this you, when this radiation is incident onto this metal surface, it is it, this this comes with energy. So this energy is released, and this energy is absorbed by some of these electrons. So when these electrons absorb this energy, and it is such that this energy is big enough to enable these electrons to break off from the, their attraction to the nucleus of where they are. When this happens, this is what we call photoelectric emission. In other words, photoelectric emission is going to take place when these electrons here in the metal surface receive energy which is high enough for them to escape from their attraction to the, 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 the to their, their nuclear attractions. That is what they are meaning here when they say that photoelectric emission is the ejection of electrons. So those are the electrons we're talking about, the electrons at the surface, they eject. It's the ejection of electrons from a certain metal surface like zinc plate, when electromagnetic radiation, the electromagnetic radiation we are talking about is that one that I have been displaying in black, when that radiation of sufficient frequency falls on it. So that's the condition. You see, this, this, uh, this radiation here that is falling here, if, it is of a, if, it is, if, if its frequency of irradiation is not high enough, then these electrons might not have the necessary energy to, you know, to be emitted, to jump out of, to break free from the nuclear attraction they have. However, if this incident radiation is having, and, you know, it is a frequency that is high enough, then it will make these electrons to be ejected off the metal surface. And that's what we call photoelectric emission. So photoelectric emission Again, is the ejection of electrons from a certain metal surface when the electromagnetic radiation of high enough frequency falls on it. So here it normally occurs in phototubes and photoelectric cells. So up here they are talking about a photosensitive cell, like a phototube or a photoelectric cell. So if you're looking at a photoelectric cell, the thing about a photoelectric cell consists of a cathode coated with photosensitive material. If you look down here, the cathode they're talking about, that is, the, here we are having a zinc cathode right here. The cathode is something that is, it's connected to the negative. If you look at this diagram, this, this thing, um, it, it is connected to the negative terminal here. That's the negative, this is the positive. So the negative terminal is the, the zinc, it, it's the cathode and it is zinc, it is coated. And then we have the anode here, it's the positive side. So what happens is that we are having, you know, light rays coming in from up here. Not light rays, but radiation. When they come, they fall onto this surface. When they fall onto this surface, 
photoelectric emission takes place. When photoelectric emission takes place, the electrons are emitted. So those are the electrons being emitted. Now, as they are emitted, they are attract. You remember the electrons are negatively charged, so they are attracted towards the positive terminal. And definitely, uh, the speed with which they are able to move from here to there, that speed is determined by the voltage here. Okay. So this thing is trying to explain that the notes that a photoelectric photoelectric cell consists of a cathode, which we have seen as a cathode zinc cathode, coated with a photosensitive material and an anode. So that's what they're talking about, that we're having a cathode here. We have this cathode, we have this anode right there. Okay, and these are enclosed in a vacuum. This is the vacuum. You see this circle right here? Yeah, that is a vacuum. A vacuum is simply a space that does not have air. The reason as to why this thing is enclosed in a vacuum is so that, you know, when these electrons are moving, they do not collide with any air particles. Because if they collide with any air particles, it would mean that some of these electrons, as they are moving, they'll lose energy to those air particles. And there would be ionization inside that if there are air particles colliding. So to avoid that loss of energy, they make it a vacuum, you know? They make it a vacuum so that the electrons uh, are able to move freely. So that's what they mean, that... So these are enclosed in a vacuum glass tube. The glass tube is evacuated in order to avoid collision of the ejected electrons with the air. That's what I've just said, that when these electrons are ejected, they should not collide with air particles because there will be loss of energy. So to avoid that, we remove the air and make it a vacuum. So that's what they have to, to avoid um, the collisions of ejected electrons with air or gas molecules. This would otherwise lead to low currents. Of course, it would lead to low currents because of loss of energy. So let's continue with our notes. So uh, here, this is just a narrative of the explanation. They're saying electromagnetic radiations like ultraviolet radiations are directed into the cathode and supply sufficient energy that causes liberation of the electrons. It's what I just mentioned that when, you know, these radiations are incident onto the cathode, you know, you can just use any other phrasing of English as long as you're conveying the idea that these radiations are of high enough frequency are irradiated onto the zinc anode. And when they do so, photoelectric emission takes place. When photoelectric emission takes place, the electrons are liberated. That's what they are talking about here. The photoelectric emission causes the liberation of electrons. So we continue to say that the electrons are then attracted by the anode and produce current in the circuit, hence the ammeter deflects. So meaning that when these electrons travel, they collide with the anode, and that is what completes this circuit, and it causes this ammeter to deflect. So when this ammeter deflects, it's, it's, a, sign it's a signal that the current is flowing and the transaction has been completed by those electrons that are flowing. Okay, so the magnitude of the current produced definitely is proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation. Yeah, so meaning that if you want, if, if by intensity of radiation, we are talking about, you know, how many, how much radiation is coming in. Okay, so for let's say I have three lines of radiation, it means the current here will be low. If I want this current to be high, it means that I have to increase the intensity of the radiations, meaning that more rays of radiation come. So the higher the intensity of the radiation, the higher the current, because the higher the intensity of the radiation means more electrons are going to be emitted. And when more electrons are emitted, it means it's going to be more charges flowing in the circuit, hence more current. So that's what they mean here when they say that the magnitude of the current produced is proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation. In other words, the magnitude of the current produced is as a result of the incident radiation. So the higher the incident, the higher the current. The lower the, 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 the intensity of the incident radiation, the lower the current. So next, they are saying that if a gas is introduced into the tube, the current decreases slowly because gas particles collide with electrons, hence reducing the number of electrons reaching the anode. Now, let me just discuss this briefly, but this is more for advanced 
learners. They are the ones that are required to explain these details in their exams. People doing advanced physics. Uh, when, uh, let's say you introduce particles here, gas particles, it could be air. They are here. So it means that um, when these electrons here come and they are released, some of them, instead of reaching the anode, some of them will be in the business of colliding with these gas particles. So when they collide, it means that you're going to have less electrons reaching the anode. Because the ones that are being released from the cathode, instead of reaching the anode, they are colliding with the gas particles inside there. So when you have less particles reaching, it means that the amount of current registered here will become low. It's going to keep reducing and reducing. That's why it is, sub, it is a vacuum in the first place. So that's what they're trying to say here. That if a gas is introduced into the tube, current decreases slowly because the gas particles collide with electrons. And so they reduce the number of particles reaching the anode. That's what they mean. This could be something that can be asked in an objective or they can ask it in a section B. And they're like, okay, this is a vacuum. They ask you, why is this thing a vacuum? You're supposed to explain why it's a vacuum. It's a vacuum because these electrons that are ejected, you try, they are not supposed to, they are, you're preventing them from colliding with the air particles. Or this place is made a vacuum so that all the electrons that are ejected are able to reach the anode. As simple as that. That's why it's a vacuum. Now they can ask you, okay, now if we introduce air in there, air particles or gas particles, what is going to happen to the, to the current? So this is what will happen. What will happen is that because you have introduced, you know, the um, air particles or gas particles inside here, it means that the electrons that are being into, released here, they are, collide, they are going to collide with these gas particles you've introduced here, inside this, the, inside here. So when they do collide, it means that you're going to have less electrons reaching the anode. And if they are have, you're having less electrons reaching the anode because some of them are on the way they are colliding with other gases and they are being distracted, then it means the amount of current is going to reduce. So that's it. So definitely these are some of the conditions that affect or, uh, photoelectric emission. Definitely the nature of the metal. Some different metals have different ways they respond to irradiation. Then also very important is the frequency of the incident radiation. If the frequency of the incident radiation doesn't have um, it doesn't have um, um, a frequency that is high enough, then no photoelectric emission will take place. So again, that minimum frequency that is required for photoelectric emission to take place is what we call threshold frequency. So you, you ask what is threshold frequency? Threshold frequency is the minimum amount of frequency of an incident radiation that is required for photoelectric emission to take place.